to the in-house league brought to you in part by Celebrity Clash League. My name is Bahamut, and joining me this evening is going to be McIntyre. Are you ready for our best of five in-house series? Looking forward to it tonight. I mean, we got another great, great roster set up here. Um, a bunch of good players and more Heroes of the Storm, competitive Heroes of the Storm, right? One of my favorite things mm -hmm. to watch and talk about. So tonight should be really fun. Uh, we got two new teams. And as always, we, we're a little behind schedule. So we're going to be just top right into it uh, tonight. And we're heading into game number one. It's going to be on Garden of Terror. Uh, kind of new map introduced to the map. Well, how, do, how do you feel about this map? Garden of Terror is actually, it's it's a great map. There's a lot of camps around, and there's a lot of utility that you can throw into said map. There's actually a video that came out. Um, there, well, actually, no, Kyle Ferguson, I believe, is working on a video um, that's soon to come out about actually how to play this map. There was, I was thinking back to the end of the Wait, no, that, that, came on t that came out today, actually. Did it? Did it finally release it, today? Yeah, I wasn't I believe, sure. I believe it did. Okay, I might yeah, be wrong, I know, too. I know, if it we is, talk, we talked to yeah. <laughs> either either way, it's coming out. There's a really good video. It breaks down a lot of like the good camp timings, rotations, positioning. Um, also, not paradox had a bit on the into the Nexus podcast where he also talked about camp spawning and stuff like that. So there's a lot of good information on Garden of Terror since it was reworked a while ago. People are mm -hmm. still kind of figuring it out, but I'd, I'd say the general consensus is camp priority is a big factor. Making sure that you're able to get that you know, the rotations to the camps, you're able to put those on the board, and then you're also able to brawl over the subjective phase. So there's a, there's a lot of good things to consider, but I think camp will be one of the major priorities as we get into this. But a Deathwing, Stuke off on the right, Sylvanas to be banned out as she is kind of in our higher end of the meta as, well, tower damage is really important, and Zul's yeah. still still sitting pretty high in the meta as well. And I think, you know, just taking, taking down the towers. This is actually an interesting map because this is one of the maps where, like, the boss mechanic actually turns buildings off right so like it's yeah. a it's it's an excuse to dive towers like something that like no longer you can do with a new aggro of towers um and keeps and whatnot so uh, i think that's interesting and you know here, here we go with a Rhaegar actually picked up you were just talking about how camp driven the map is and how mm -hmm. you know when the plant pot comes down we have the go button I'm depressed already because I'm discussing something and now nothing that I just said means anything. Uh, I love this. We are going to see after Zimra picked up as well coming out from Team and, Grison. And Greymane too. Like, let's yeah. not forget about the fact <laughs> no. that Greymane's really strong. Like, <laughs> I mean, we, we could see Go for the Throat. I mean, you and I have been, we've been talking and mm. pushing Go for the Throat a little bit here and there on these Monday night streams, but um both teams are well both teams will need a main tank so i wonder if they kind of start to to get rid of a couple of those like garage would be annoying etc that power slide in actually would pair well with the gray main and samuro so yeah that, that that initial setup makes a lot of sense but i would expect like even then like a garage wouldn't be bad here joanna is actually actually joanna is something that i would consider banning if they can't get it themselves because the shield glare into samuro for the reveal condemned to pull everything together you also have the subdue that you can finish out easily against mm -hmm. samuro clones because you only need one extra member around i that was actually we played into a samuro recently with some friends and that was like the one thing i think it was actually on our wednesday wednesday stream i literally w'd i got my condemn and then i you know at level seven i Boom. got the subdue finished out and it was like it was level seven at that moment we were like five minutes in the game we we're like cool we have 80 percent slow the rest of the game so yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if we actually see a priority onto Joan at this point, in my opinion, from Donuts. Plus, it also plays a little bit into their control composition that they're kind of starting to formulate at this point. I, I think it's interesting that Tyrael bans here too, right? Uh, there's the Joanna, right? The defensive defensive tank, I think, is necessary yeah. here. And I like the Sonya pick. Uh, I'll, I'll continue to harp on it with the Samro. It's just important that your kind of role against Samro is just to make sure that he can't just like dominate the lane get value mm -hmm. get left alone um to to split right so he he's very good if he has the space to do something on the map um and you know a character like sonia is really strong against that um yeah. so i like i like that pick up here um and we see the garage kerosene picked up out of team croissant i'm not really sure I, I mean we go back to this last week right with the garage not i'm yeah. not a mega garage fan especially in a proactive composition like this um, they're very mm -hmm. aggro. They're very aggressive. I would have liked to see things like Murden, Jump Stun into seven. Oh, oh a lot. This is a good. I mean, if the players are capable of playing it, this is a wonderful pick. And while it might get badgered by the fact that Samuro exists, it's a very good answer to Abathur, right? While mm -hmm. Samuro might be able to pressure and and kind of continue to push this lane to that lane, 
um, having the Vikings on the map is going to relieve a lot of that movement stress that the Abathur will create on the map. So I really like this pickup from Team Donut um, to kind of now allow the core four man to do as they need. The Sonya can do camps. The Sonya can stop the Samurai from pushing. Um, and again, this is very, very good against this defensive slow garage pick. There's not a mm -hmm. lot of proactive aggression to really force fights. So in most cases, they, they might just be able to back up. But here, I mean, we're hopping right into game number one here on Garden of Terror. Looking forward to yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, the, I was l thinking about this Garrosh, and like the the entire time I was just like, you know, a Nubrak would work really well with this, there especially because we yep. saw the Kerazine first. I was just like, dive on top of dive on top of aggression, and, and just it's just constant pressure into a team that wants to play a lot slower on the side of of Donuts here. Uh, the Sony into Samuro, uh, you know, you can get some good healing off of the wind, uh, the the life funnel, excuse me, at level seven. So there's there's a lot of good options um, for both teams, but either way, we're gonna go ahead and get on into this on the left hand side. We got our delicious Donuts. We have got funds on the Sonya. Troy is going to be on the Rainer. Legacy will be on that Rhaegar. We've got Lupus on the Joanna, and then Tori will be playing the Lost Vikings. And looking over at Team Croissant, we have going to have Pacho on that garage. Is it a West Ping? We might need to rehost. Oh, it in my is. best server, I might... Yeah, remake, remake. remake. That's, that, might be, that might be me, because I think I was playing Storm League over the weekend. <laughs> All good. So I said it's the best server, I think. I think. Either way, we're gonna go. We're gonna remake this real quick, and we'll get back into this game. Um, yeah, I'm set to best match, so it pulled oh, me. Good. It pulled to my server. All right. Either way, we are gonna be easy in, start. Yeah, the Garden of Terror. It's, <laughs> it's like, I think the, the 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 crazy part about this map too is it's very it, it's 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 a um, it's a very momentum based map. Um, yes not it's not so much like the towers of doom where you hit a kind of rebound um you don't really get that on this map uh the pressure continues and le level leads tend to lead into more pressure that then tend yep. to lead into more level leads um the rebound mechanic of this map in my opinion isn't as much there right uh you're really netting on winning a big team fight or in these teams' cases, trying to play the map uh, and pressuring, yeah. similar to something like Curse Hollow or uh, even, I would say, Sky Temple. But uh, there's a lot of space on the map. There's a lot of room for rotations with core um, players of the team. So we'll see if both of them can do that. It is, it's going to be exciting, right? It's a Samuro Vikings. You don't see this every right. day. Um, both teams are very capable of doing a lot of different things, right? So uh, I see an avatar hovered. Something about these comps looks incorrect. Yeah. Uh, I think CPX it's CPX and, and... Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Legacy, I think it was. I thought I had it initially. There we go. I think we're good. We're good, cheap. <laughs> they, they want <laughs> Legacy instead. I was like, avatar Viking comp. Hmm. Yeah, that, that, looked, that looked a little weird for a second there. All right, now now we got everyone here, so I'm going to push the start game on. All right, we should properly load into the right server this time. That's my mistake. I forgot to uh, I forgot to actually swap to central server before we got into tonight's games. But either way, we are going to be getting ourselves into Garden of Terror for game number one. A fairly good draft between both these teams. Um, as you noted, you know, there's going to be some good play into each other with the Abathur versus the Vikings and all that kind of good stuff. Let's double check. Central server, we're good. We got the yeah. delicious donuts on the left-hand side. Legacy on that Rhaegar. Funds will be on the, jo uh, excuse me, Sonia. Lupus will be on the Joanna. We have Troy on that Rainer. And then Tori will be on the Lost Vikings. And looking at the team Chris on Hot Show on the garage. TT Porgy is going to be playing... The Monk, what is his name? Karazine, something like that. Mm -hmm. Avatar on CPX. Pyro on playing. The Grey Main and Valmar is going to be on Samro. Now it's going to be a nice mid lane. Actually, hold on. Like, Look at this bottom lane right now coming out from the members of, uh, of Donuts. Is there no, not a rule on roll I don't know. I don't know. I don't even, I don't what make the rules What does that even here. mean? Just... What, did someone roll swap? <laughs> what happened? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm skimming here. These guys, <laughs> I don't even know. We have an I don't early tower here. Eric does die for this, but I think that's probably equal experience. The problem is if like Team Corsant plays the let's kill the Vikings mini game, I think that they'll just lose from building advantage. Although I do like the green main pushing in uh, very hard to deal with for the Vikings. 
And obviously the garage can throw people over towers if towers exist. But you see Fun's now rotating. He really needs to invest in that Samuro lane. Um, yeah, I think so. Because exactly do, what we're seeing here, right? This is something I, you just don't want Samuro to be able to do. I do want to point out, you were saying, you know, you know, structures versus experience. So the one Viking kill, 75 experience. The one tower destruction, 125. So yeah. there's a slight advantage. And yeah, it's exactly that. Like you were just saying, like if they chase around the Vikings and they're going to go for kills on those, eh, you're probably going to start to falter against this team because they're going to get more, you know, experience gained through camps as well as just the overall pressure they're applying and taking down structures throughout the game. Whereas Vikings are going to be a little experience here and there overall. I, I agree with you 100%. As you can see, Grayman on the right-hand side grabbing the camp. It looks like I thought they were going to go to Bruiser camp with the help of Abathur, but not going to be the case. They do have some oh actually hold on an invade over on the yeah. right hand side but they don't step on they're just gonna go ahead and kind of poke at us this will be slight experience advantage for our donuts croissant actually trying to get back into this bottom lane garage looking to jump onto this but not able to make anything happen down here this, this is like actually maybe a fort they, they're gonna have a terrible time defending this Grayman. oh troy actually taking a bunch of keep towers damage uh hacho doing his best but just a little bit of damage here or there Pyro coming down as well to clear up the wave. What I was going to say is, like, they actually have really bad wave clear, but the Ogres, I believe, they're just did a really good amount of damage to that wave and were able to mm -hmm. clean it up. And they just don't really have AoE, right? Um, Monk, Garage, neither of those characters are, like, known for their high wave clear. You see Lupus caught out here on Sobble is going to be popped. The Abahat, is he able to hit his Q again? Hacho, cheap nah, shot. Be fine. No. Yeah, he does get out of there. Lupus doing a good job to stay alive there as the first objective is going to be spawning. Invade on the camp in this top right right now coming out from the side of Donuts. Um, looks like they're going to give the seed for now, but Samuro is showing top against them. Ooh, Karazim's going to round this and actually find the entire team that's going... Is there a spear in from Sonya? No, they're going to be able to blink towards their block totem. They're going to get out of there as they're just going to rotate to top lane and throw some pressure up here into Samuro. Looks like they also do still have a Viking and Joanna still harassing around the objective. So nice split coming out from Donuts as Croissant's trying to figure out exactly how they want to play against this composition around the first objective. Seems like they're just going to give it and continue to soak out lanes. I, yeah, no one's even gotten the objective, right? Lupus caught out here as well. Popping the unsolvable. Body shot is going to hit, but he, you know, body shot, I think, in that case, a little early, right? Uh, yeah. Popped it while the unstoppable was still up. He could have been a little more disciplined and patient, um, able to pick it up, but they are able to get the first seed. Maybe Eric says nay. Yeah, so I'm, Eric. There's, there's, yeah, there's yeah. so much <laughs> happening on this map right now. There's, there's, there's fights in mid, there's fights in tops. Eric's so swift and so Baylog brave is going to be the <laughs> Yeah, Baylog goes down in mid lane. I was watching Grayman and Baylog go at it, but... Um, they're actually going to rotate quite a few members in the top lane, it seems. Eric should be able to get the channel. Olaf going to rotate to mid to uh, keep soaking up that experience. And realistically, they've lost two Vikings, but the experience is still just even because, well, they've just been getting consistent pressure throughout the map. Uh, I do want to point out that Abathur did go into Meal Trolls and get thrown out of position. They're going to be going down. That's the first full kill of the game as we do have Samuro clones just actually getting armor reduction. And Lupus is getting very low. Shield Glare is going to help them. Valmar is going to be in that wind walk, isn't able to find anything as the toss goes out into Farky, who continues to punch into this enemy team stepping into tower range is there enough damage doesn't seem like they're going to find the kill as hot show is just going to be eating autos with the armor they have and well that's going to be the next objective and still viking soaking up and still getting value for them wait the the king erica actually did the whole camp by himself there and got the channel of the seats olaf maybe it's dying Eric's to so valmar is... too oh Ooh, Eric, don't die eric swift he's quick um yeah, they've actually also got Eric the Swift at level four, at level four as well, so that does give them base movement increase if I'm not mistaken. It's like heal yeah, one by ten percent. Yeah. Yep, yeah. and also increased healing, so he can just he just he just plays that harassment role so much better with that level four. Body block, Eric. See, oh, I don't think there's do anything it. you can do. No, Hacho makes it out. The armor is going to be good. That's going to be the toss under Rhaegar. Legacy taking a lot of damage from the tower shots. Garrosh does go down, even on kills right there. Objective, I believe. No, it's actually not even, uh, no one went for it yet. Yeah, um, mm. so they're just running it down. The, the objective is sitting there, but bottom is a full on scrap fest. They're learning what towers do now. <laughs> you just can't dive keeps anymore or forts in this no. case, right? Uh, no, like you can't dive structures or gates anymore in general. Like it's, it's insane how much damage they do. Yeah, picking up the double kill there from Team Kassan, but Baylog doing his best, clearing up the wave. 
I, this is the thing that I fear, though. The Samuro just getting all the space and time in the world. Um, if left unchecked, as you see, Olaf just getting bashed down. Volmer does take a lot of damage there. Maybe able to pick up the objective here. Troy China is best to knock back on Hot Choke. Porky's going to show up and start punching people out. Legacy taking so much damage. A nice taunt connecting. Legacy, no heal. He's taken down by Porky. Might be more bullet is going to connect onto Lupus, taking him to about half. The clone is clone. popped. Probably just a zoning clone. Acho able to get the channel. One seed for each team now. And probably a camp, potentially into a death push into the top lane. Again, they really need to manage the Samuro by uh, Sonya. Sonya has to do it. Um, as much as keeping the four man together is important, um, without the Sonya in these team fights, they're incredibly weak. Uh, Sonya just needs to let the Vikings play the map. Uh, this that needs to be their their job this game and she needs to start getting engaged in these fights and Really finding that Simro and keeping him locked down from just being able to take a fort here for free in the top lane as they just were able to do um, from team croissant mm -hmm. and, and they also have you know, they have life fun at level seven That's a really good tool into them I know they have armor reduction from from way of the blade up to negative 15 if I'm not mistaken But still like I think the the healing you can get is really beneficial and in the 1v1 i think you definitely can put some pressure onto them as this is going to be the consistent the continue actually a huge invade coming out of this camp bless shield was out from joanna olaf is gonna be the first one to go down curse well coming out from Greyman. i think it missed right there as hot is able to get with a little bit of health pirate trying to get out of here as well and it looks like they're just gonna steal the camp they're gonna back off samuro is just above us and tori will get initial damage by them but i think they're gonna be able to back off and potentially get themselves the advantage here when it comes to the seed phase on garden of terror yeah, it looks like the seed camp is going to go to them, put him at a 2 3 out. Unless Porky has something to say about it, he's doing his best. He punches the Raider. <laughs> he gives the Raider, tactical Raider Balmor showing up, putting a lot of damage on Troy, knocking his armor, but the heal coming off from Legacy, topping that back up. Um, yeah, the Raider actually had blocked the Q <laughs> there from Porky. A sec attempt number two onto the keep. Flesh is going to be down. The bullet does connect. Lupus has no unstoppable here. Cannot afford. To get slowed i like this ancestral to turn maybe a re-engage a nice q coming out funds is going to be on the back line as you see him spinning away hacho with a taunt onto two lupus taking a lot of damage but funds out of control here spinning to win maybe a double maybe a triple pirate almost going down he is taken out i believe hacho probably falls here as well funds watch out 40 armor he is going to get out of there a nice double kill picked up i i, I was going to say I thought someone was there, and then they had died, but it was actually just the Grand Man clone, so... Um. I, uh, honest to God, like, I'll do that so much myself. I'm just like, oh, they went to... Wait, no, wait, where's the death timer? Yeah, they, yeah, no, I know. So, so... I want to I want to point that I want to bring this up because I honest to God can't remember if I dreamed it if it happened last Wednesday or if it was last Monday but um, the idea of using Garrosh to actually literally pull them into tower range and then using Warlord's challenge specifically around towers so that way they do actually auto attack into you because Warlord's challenge forces you to attack said hero so if you actually get under ta tower range and you're trying to defend like what's like popping Warlord's challenge which is what like a uh, a 50 oh that's a 50 second cooldown it's a little longer than i was i was thinking off the top of my head but like even then like you might be able to get some autos onto you and get that armor reduction so it's just something i was thinking about was like garage actually might have a more prominent place within our meta if teams are you know like like um like braxis hold out's a good you know example where, where the team's pushing up you just get that warlords they auto you then the towers now target that hero maybe you play around that i don't know it's just something i was thinking about or just like it's something that popped in my head and i was like that's a really really strong tool i wonder if you can play around that factor as the, as the game progresses I guess it's one of the two taunts in the game too, right? Yes. Um, with him and Varian. So yep. totally possible. We, we probably will see that more uh, often than not now. Um, just using that to draw, force the aggro, right? Mm -hmm. um, on the other team, but Olaf taken out. Not not the biggest of deals. Again, if they just play like hunt the Vikings, they're not gonna really achieve anything here. Uh, they really need to get the map moving in their favor from Team Croissant. The, the hard camp top lane is really nice of that. Uh, you do see the Bay himself walking up to the top lane. Probably going to clear that out uh, with that cleave auto attack and spin to win. Eric just giving him some uh, support here. But the hard camp is going to be started here and potentially an invade coming out from Team Croissant. They got the can. Oh no! Actually, invades are here. That's going to be uh, Wrath of Berserker coming out as well. Warlord's challenge will be out as on top of this. Double Gray Main is going to be here. Raider in the back line getting a lot of value. That's going to be the ancestor healing onto one funds trying to spin to win. That's going to be a stasis onto one player. So that's Hotcho staying alive from the divine palm from Porky. As now Valmar is getting very low. Needs to get out. Will use the wind walk. Pirate is very low as well. Trying to get those autos out in the human form. Now they're just backing out with that little increased movement speed. You have Olaf on the left side of our screen getting the channel. They force them out. They don't give over one, and they get the 
kill in their favor. That's a very well played objective phase for the members of Donuts, and now they get the objective as well. So that's going to be some advantage while there's no healer pushing or excuse me defending again against this. I, I mean, I'm seeing a trend. Uh, each of these fights, the Grosh is opening with a taunt. Oh, the the boys have been summoned, but Valmar doing his best to dodge the triple Z's a dodgeball. Is he able to juke them <laughs> out? The totem is going to connect from Legacy, but he he's probably gone. It's Samurai, right? Eric's Mentori. Eric, you, Eric, you sure? Don't die! Oh, he's baiting it. He's baiting him. Oh. <laughs> That's it only took four, yeah, no, five people. Yeah, team. The entire objective yeah. is, is useless now. Um, actually, Porky here. We, we are going to get the middle fort here, but Olaf doing his best there. But yeah, so one thing, that I'm, a trend that I'm seeing here is because of the Grosh having such a heavy CD, uh, once the taunt happens, Funz is just able to do whatever he wants. There's no CC to stop him from spinning, mm -hmm. right? So in every single fight, taunts happened. He stayed alive. He starts spinning. And then Croissant kind of falls apart from there. Uh, so what the, we're going to really need to see from them is more movement around the map unless it's clump uh, Beyblade fights, right? Where they're just ripping into each other because uh, they're losing 4v5s uh, doing it, right? Um, they need to look for picks uh, where they can get them and, and, and map, map priority. Like, look at look at Baylog just smashing. Mm -hmm. Easy camp started here from funds. We'll see if a fight breaks out. Oh, Valimar. Valimar is getting uh, caught over down, down below on the bottom. Is there a shield glare? Anything? 70 some health. 70 some health is what I'm seeing. No shield glare over the wall. They get out with some 70 as this is going to be Garrosh looking for a flank. CPX is going to be the clone of uh, of Pirate Rem right there. So it's going to be those double gray main for a second. Curse Bullet goes out on the funds. Does connect. The Siege Giants were grabbed on the side of Croissant as they do get the Olaf kill. Meanwhile, Balog is pushing out top lane. They've got Seed Giants in the bottom. And still, I, I, it's five to six in kills. And we're looking at still a solid level lead for the members of Donuts here. Yeah, they, they're doing a really good job of handling the kind of objectives of the map, right? We have a 2 4 mm -hmm. lead. Um, they're getting that triple soak from the Viking. Sony is doing a very good job of creating pressure to kind of not allow, the Samurai really just hasn't been able to break out, right? He's 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 under control. Um, even in this case, you know, he can't kill Eric with that level four talent, it seems like, uh, just because of how fast he is and he's able to get away quickly. But the hard camp, yeah, yeah. I, I don't really like this hard camp, I'll be honest. I don't, I don't know if they should fight. go for this invade over the objective, too, because you don't want to give over positioning. I just want to quickly note that the mercenaries is a big factor uh, when it comes to experience, as well as the minion experience. That's Baylog going down. They don't have 20 talents here just yet. They're fairly close. They don't want to give this over, obviously, because of the fact that this would give the enemy team one of those garden terrors to push out the lanes. They do have, uh, looks like, Eric in bottom lane, Olaf is in mid, and Balog is still responding for the next 40 seconds, so uh, looks like they might have Balog come up here to join in. There's going to be Siege Giant still in mid lane. That's going to be Wrath Berserker out from the Sonya. Huge toss back as well as they, sh oh, they, they get the kill onto the Joanna right there as they try and spin to win. Funds trying to make their way out with the rest of the friendly team. Troy very low as well. Funds being the target of all this. Going to spin onto this enemy team, but the armor reduction Ancestral? might be a little too much. Ancestral healing just in time. They can't turn around on this, or can they? No, Olaf. they're gonna back off. Tank Olaf, you know. Tank you know Olaf coming off. in. I mean, <laughs> play it again off of cooldown, and it, it's off cooldown, so you can pull all three Vikings into this top they're lane area. They're about to be twenty. They're trying to, you know, stall mm -hmm. for twenty here. No ancestral though. They do have to be careful. Troy caught out here. Body Ooh. check is gonna connect. Pirate taking a lot of damage. The palm. Are they disciplined enough? Oh, no. the last second. The palm is not able to proc. Troy doing his best Porky. to put out damage on the CPX. Can they take the clone down? Porky taken down by funds as well. Another just classic 4v5. The 4v5s! What's happening? How do we keep winning them? The Tango turn off. in this fight is absolutely wild. Like, I was not expecting that. I was expecting this to be Garden Terror coming out in favor for Croissant, but they just got shut down right there, and this is going to be an objective going over to the enemy's side. Well, at least a tick for it, and then more camps. And, and so just while, while we have this moment where there's a little bit of a lull, I want to just kind of... So, mention the experience coming in. So heroic is going to be seven thousand to six thousand. That's pretty close. Mercenaries, five, six thousand to two thousand. That's a big chunk of experience. And then minions, we're looking at a five thousand deficit between these two teams. Like, and then structure is going to be another two thousand in favor for the members of of donuts here. And so that's why you're seeing you're seeing them with this solid two level lead over the enemy team. And it's because they have put in some work right now. And they're going to continue to siege in through mid lane. Garrosh now just coming back, carries him up in four seconds. They might be able to get this as Baylog does go down in the top lane to the Samuro, but that's 
an easy mid lane keep for the members of Donuts as they get, uh, I don't know, well, jumps there. I, I think Natori gets out just fine. Oh, I think I've messed something up here. How um, do I reset the obs? I think I got it. I got it. C? Yeah. C or O? Yeah, I got it. I got it. I think. Are you obsing right now? I'm moving on yeah, the yeah. Bruiser camp. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying cool. to show some talents there. I'll just do the OG way. Hitting tab. Looking at level 20s. I, I was just going to mention the uh, Fury of the Swarm. They're picked up from the Vikings. I, in my opinion, mm -hmm. it creates... It makes the characters a threat, right? Um, it's like when they finally are like, oh my god, all the Vikings. Yeah. And boom, there goes half your health. Uh, so we'll see. It they also, also obviously helps them clear and, and split in the, on the map. They also have that impatience as a virtue. The uh, enemy's damage by Viking basic attack reduces the cooldown of all Viking abilities by 0.25 seconds. So that's basically if all three Vikings are smacking something, they're getting 0.75 seconds off of their heroic base, like any ability they have, all abilities. So that heroic, which is what, uh, 80 seconds? They can they can really reduce that cooldown uh, just with that level 16 right there. And uh, Nintori just going to keep pushing out top lane. Just looking around the minimap to see what we get here. It seems like this is kind of a lull setup until we get into our next objective. The big fight's going to be bust, busting out right there. I do want to point out really quickly, questing talent-wise, we do have the Subdue finished up by the Joanna at some point here. 11 stacks on the Wizen Duels for the Grey Mane. Um, and that would be all the questing talents we have at the current time. But during this next objective phase, I think this is kind of... This might be one of those like all-or-nothing moments where Croissant needs to find a fight and win it to be able to get some structure advantage. Well, we'll see, because this also could just be tears out once again in favor for Donuts, and they could be looking to push the game. Yeah, the tragedy of all this is is the fact that the Vikings can just be pushing on the map, right? So as long as they just stall, they're they're technically losing. Yeah. Um, and this is the garage, right? A taunt is going to happen. It does connect on the Joanna. The Blessed uh, has not come out yet. We'll see maybe here on Pirate. We see a Blessed Shield. It does connect on to Valmar as well. 2.5 seconds on each Unstoppable. He is going to go down. Porky looking to palm himself i believe no more palm porky goes down Balmer might be able to blink out he is taking out as well a really really well timed plus shield uh actually able to bounce to porky uh to the monk so no palm was able to be casted because he was stunned while they one shot the gray man so i really like that re-engage and i mean time and time again i, I feel like i can't reiterate on the uneffectiveness of this garage he is so limited and linear to what he wants to achieve that they're having a very hard time kind of making something happen, right? If we're starting mm -hmm. a fight with a taunt into a bullet on a Joanna, IMO, that's just a, that's a GG. That's a lost game already. And that's going to be a game number one coming out Team Donuts. I, uh, I'll say this. Without a mage, without any sort of big burst, like Orphea, Jaina, Kael'thas, Kael'thasad, Gul'dan, like... War Warlord's challenge feels very unnecessary, if that makes sense. Like, I don't want to say like, I, like I'm not decimate I, Grosh. That's what you're saying. Just like, say I feel like I feel like in this situation, you take decimate instead Probably. because Probably decimate do. works works with your composition. What you what you've built right here, because you said it perfectly. Like, Warlord's challenge comes out. What happens next? Like, Warlord's challenge is the big thing is to bring people towards you in an AOE circle. So, as I said. Jaina, Kel'Thuzad, like any, all of these mages have some sort of burst, some sort of AOE, like Chain Bomb from Kael'thas spreading to everybody. Ignite from Kael'thas is just an ability to be able to get the Flame Strike and then the, you know, Living Bomb on top of them. So, like, it's just, I feel like it was a good composition. I just, I, I wish there was a mage in there. Like, honestly, like, I wish we we maybe swapped the Abathur out for, for a Jaina or a Kael'thas. Like, I think that would have worked with their composition a lot more.